So I will now move on to my second point, which is, why should any Christian consider what the Quran has to say about Jesus? Many Christian missionaries sometimes say, why should we believe a book written 600 years later in a different language and in a different country? Although I must point out that they believe in books also written in a different language, namely Greek, whereas Jesus spoke Aramaic slash Hebrew. And these gospels were also written in different countries, such as Rome, the Gospel of Mark, for example. One of the reasons Christians should accept the Quran is because the Bible commands you to. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse number 18, God speaks about raising a prophet from the brethren of the Israelites who will be like Moses, and he will also be a mouthpiece for God. And any person who does not listen to this prophet will be destroyed. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them everything I command him. If anyone does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name, I myself will call him to account. This prophecy was not fulfilled before Jesus, as the Dead Sea Scrolls and the New Testament confirm. Moreover, Jesus cannot be this prophet, as Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse number 10 says, And there shall never arise again in Israel a prophet like unto Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. And since Jesus was from amongst Israel, he is ruled out. Moreover, Jesus himself said that this prophet will come after him. And John chapter 14, 15 and 16, Jesus speaks of someone to come after him who will testify to who he is. If you read the text carefully, you can see that this person is in fact the prophet like Moses, who shall speak what he hears and shall be told what to say, which doesn't sound like a Holy Ghost is 100% God. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them everything I command him. Christians claim this text is regarding the Holy Ghost, but it's clear that it's not the Holy Ghost. Also, did the Holy Ghost guide Christians into all truth and testify regarding Jesus? The answer is no, as any book on church history shows that Christians were at each other's throats for centuries upon centuries, trying to figure out things like, was Jesus just a man? Or was he just God? Or was he both? Was he the Father? Or was he a separate person? Was he subordinate to the Father? Or was he co-equal? And the list goes on. And I've got church father quotes to confirm that. Whereas when the Quran was revealed, it gave a clear, concise, and coherent picture of who Jesus was. And Muslims are agreed across the board. We didn't argue with each other for centuries trying to figure out who Jesus is, like the Christians. Now, Zakir made the point about prophecy, uh, suggesting that the, the Bible prophesies uh, Muhammad. Now, the reason Muslims believe that the Bible prophesies Muhammad is that the Quran says the Bible prophesies Muhammad. So if you're a Muslim, you have to find things in the Bible that prophesy Muhammad, otherwise the, the Quran is incorrect. So Muslims go to the Bible, I've been through it in a fine tooth cone just to find any slither of a verse that could be taken to be prophesying Muhammad. I'm sure if any of you have ever read through Deuteronomy, you weren't struck by a verse that you thought that must be referring to Muhammad. The prophecy that Zakir spoke to was about um, a countryman. Now, the word countryman clearly means, in that context, uh, a fellow Israelite. In the book of Acts, Peter applies that very prophecy uh, to Jesus. The parallel stated with that prophecy is the one stated, someone who would speak God's words. Jesus did indeed speak God's words. At the time that prophecy was given, there weren't actually other prophets to refer to uh, apart from, uh, from Moses. He says, um, Deuteronomy can't refer to Muhammad because the word countryman means fellow Israelite. Actually, Genesis chapter 16 explicitly calls Ishmael the brethren of his brothers, which is Isaac and the other sons of Ishmael, um, of um, Abraham.
In um, Deuteronomy chapter 2, the Edomites, who are Arabs, are called the brethren of the Israelites. So you have a contradiction there then. If you claim Deuteronomy 18 is talking about a fellow Israelite, then Deuteronomy chapter 34 denies that a prophet in Israel can be like Moses. This is why the Jewish study Bible claims there's a contradiction in this text. The only explanation is brethren refers to an Arab, not to a fellow Israelite. He says, I haven't given you a reason that the Quran is the, um, it should be trusted, but I told you that the book of Deuteronomy uh, prophesizes a person who will be from the brethren of the Israelites. Since Deuteronomy 34 denies a fellow Israelite can be that prophet, it can only be from the Arabs. You haven't refuted that yet. Okay, my, my reply to that, I was making notes, getting ready to reply to that point. And I've decided I'm not going to reply to that point. I'm going to stay, take a step back and remind you of something I said earlier on. I said, I expect Zakir tonight. I don't expect he's going to try and convince us that the Quran is a revelation from God. I mean, all he's offered is this vague prophecy from Deuteronomy. I said, what I think Zakir is going to focus on is undermining the New Testament. And the debate tonight, the vast majority of it, is the sort of nitpicking criticism of the New Testament to undermine it. I don't think we've heard a positive case from Zakir. What Zakir believes about Jesus is exactly what the Quran teaches. <laughs> The things the Quran says he believes, the things that um, the Quran says that contradict the New Testament he believes. But Zakir is not trying to defend his own view. All he's doing is sort of slinging mud at the New Testament, attacking the New Testament again and again and again and again and again. So I'd like to invite Zakir. Can he give us any reason better than a prophecy in Deuteronomy that doesn't mention the, can the Quran, doesn't mention Muhammad, and is really clutching at straws? Is there any other reason why we should accept the Quran as, as God's words to overrule the uh, eyewitness accounts of Jesus' life. I will allow Mr. St. Thomas, yeah. then, please. You see, what Richard doesn't understand is I, the topic tonight is who was Jesus. I don't have to spend 20, uh, out of 20 minutes, 10 minutes trying to prove the Quran is the word of God because tomorrow we're debating Islam or Christianity, which is a true faith. That's when you should be asking me to bring up my proof, not today. But notice he says, oh, uh, Deuteronomy 18, he's playing it down. But so far, Richard hasn't refuted it, yet nearly everything he's brought up, Isaiah 53, Daniel chapter 7, Isaiah 9, I've refuted it. So why can't you refute um, Deuteronomy 18 if it's such a vague prophecy that doesn't mention Arabs or the Quran? So uh, uh, I think it's you clutching at straws and not getting to the point. Uh, so please answer this question. Deuteronomy 18 says he has to be from the brethren of the Israelites. Deuteronomy 34 denies um, an Israelite can be like Moses. Please answer that contradiction. Okay, uh, but Deuteronomy 18, 18, just to, to clarify, I can't remember it word for word, um, but it basically says a prophet will arise among you like Moses from among your brothers. It says something like that. Okay, now I'm just going to leave it to you to make your, your judgment whether that is a clear prophecy about Muhammad and the Quran or whether it's not. I don't need to say anything else. I'll leave that with you to make up your own mind. Now, despite me repeatedly inviting Zakia to make a positive case why we should regard the Quran as a revelation from God. All we've had is the vague um, prophecy from Deuteronomy 18, which I'm sure anyone open mind, op with an open mind would agree can't be taken as any strong evidence that the Quran is a revelation from God. First point I'd like to say is that um, Richard keeps saying I brought up the vague prophecy of Deuteronomy 18, yet Richard couldn't refute it, whereas Isaiah 53, Isaiah 9, 6, and, um, or Daniel 7 were all refuted. In the book of Acts, Peter applies that very prophecy uh, to Jesus. Deuteronomy 18, often referred to uh, by Christians as the prophet greater than Moses. It's interesting that the passage itself doesn't speak about someone greater 
than Moses. It speaks about someone like Moses. Well, it, it, it well really, if you go to the the, the end of the book of uh, of Deuteronomy, it 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 does say uh, right at the end. If I go there now, ah, verse ten of uh, chapter thirty four, it says, "But since then there has not arisen in Israel a prophet like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face." Yeah, I find that puzzling because. Um, Deuteronomy 18 speaks about a prophet like Moses, um, but you mentioned at the end of the Deuteronomy, it says that there, there never will be a prophet, never has been a prophet as great as Moses. He seems to mm. be the, the, described specifically as the greatest of prophets. The Prophet of Allah, Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, I'm just going to leave it to you to make your, your judgment whether that is a clear prophecy about Muhammad and the Quran or whether it's not. I don't need to say anything else. I'll leave that with you to make up your own mind. والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما غوى وما ينطق عن الهوى إن هو إلا وحي يوحى علمه شديد القوى Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam